Hey guys, Eric from Pinshape again. Uh, today's tutorial will be a pretty easy one, just about water, making a watertight mesh and looking at your poly count to make sure that it's not too high for any service or uh, slicer that you may have to uh, slice it up for print. Um, basically, we're going to start off with uh, we have our subtools, obviously all separated. Uh, can't have that when you're working with 3D printing. Basically, what you want to do is uh, Merge visible all your subtools, and so you get as a new sub uh, as a new tool. Uh, after that, you'll have everything together. Everything will be in different poly groups. Uh, looking up here, you're going to see that that's definitely way too high for any uh, any printer to really use. Uh, poly counts just needs to be a lot lower for anything to recognize it at this point. Um, but we'll get to that later. Uh, right now, uh, you want to make sure that all of your subtools uh, intersect at some point. Uh, this collar is a little, the line's a little too far forward, so we're going to just push that back here with the move tool. Um, that should look pretty good. Just check around, make sure everything looks good. Uh, clear your mask. Uh, we're going to try 64 to dynamesh this. Uh, when you dynamesh it, that's pretty much when it's going to. Uh, try and combine everything into one solid mesh. Uh, let's see what it does. Take a while. Nine mesh all it does. All right. So take a look around. You notice they were in the front. Uh, we have a few issues. So it tried when it tried dyna meshing. Apparently, uh, some of the geo is a little too close. Right there. That's where you get these holes from. Uh, that would be bad for any print. You'll get uh, you'll get skipped layers. You'll get failed prints. Uh, you really gotta look out for this type of stuff when you're uh, making things for print. Uh, we're gonna have to just back up a little bit back where we have our separate groups and before we dynameshed, and uh, take a look at the uh, inside of this collar. See if we can fix that up a little bit. So we're gonna separate that. On the solo mode, look around. Yeah, so that's really not going to be able to work. We're going to just need to pretty much just smooth out the back of it. Um, pretty easy. Just make sure uh, you use your smooth brush. Um, use a clay buildup brush, and uh, make sure you have back face masking on. Uh, we're just going to kind of like fill in all this stuff to separate the front of the front of that collar from the back. Pretty easy. Just make sure you're always smoothing. Um, make sure when you have that on, you have back face on that too, so it doesn't affect the front. Fill it in, fill it in, fill it in. Smooth, smooth, smooth. What you see when you're using, uh, I like using clay built up the best, uh, just quickens the space, makes it a lot easier. Get up here, and we're almost done with this. Yeah. Once you see it's laying down that alpha a lot better, you know it's definitely a lot cleaner than it was. Cool, that should be good. I'm going to merge down, just go on top, merge your subtools back together. Okay. Alright, I'm going to try dynameshing again. You know, so if it starts going a lot smoother, then you're, you know that dynamesh isn't running to, into as many issues where it needs to calculate things as much. Yep. That did it. Looks a lot better. You look at your uh, poly frame. Take a look at that. Looks better. So, what you want to look out for to make sure that everything's uh, looking good when you turn on your, po your uh, poly groups, your poly frame, you're going to take a look to see where your meshes are intersecting. If you see that they have added geo between the two, you'll know that those pieces are watertight. 
The good thing about it is that if you have any poly paint information, and it still uh, still keeps all that. In. And yep, looks all good. Um, last step, pretty much just uh, decimating. Uh, turn off your colorized information because it's going to get rid of that anyway. Um, I like getting it pretty low, but uh, I don't like seeing deformation to the surface. If it's too low, you'll start seeing uh, when it triangulates everything, it'll start deforming your surface, making it more geometrical. Um, pretty much you just want to get it down as low as possible, and around 100 is 100,000 is usually good. Um, lower if you want it that way. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, that's it for this tutorial. Um, happy modeling!